Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Zwift Community Live broadcast of Workout Wednesday with multi-time world champion and Olympian as well as Tour de France rider Greg Henderson. Uh, Coach Hendy, welcome to the broadcast today. Coach Hendy, good to have you here. And uh, looks like we are getting underway with our workout right from the get-go here. And uh, today we are testing out group workout mode, actually. So we're going to get right on into it, actually. This is uh, a new feature, actually, in Zwift. You can join up with us and do right alongside us today. So uh, what do we got on tap today, Greg? So um, today I've designed one of the uh, exercises we used to use a lot leading into the Tour de France with um, in relation to delivering the sprinter to the line as fast as possible. So it's uh, effectively looks like a whole lot of mini intervals, but what what's actually happening is it's each rider in front of your in front of you slowly gets faster and faster and faster until you're the sprinter and you've got a 15 second sprint there. You can pretend you're Mark Cavendish, you can pretend you're Andre Greipel, but it's just one of those efforts that we used in training a lot to really dial down that that uh, lead out so that it was so fast that no one could pass us. Awesome, awesome. And it looks like um, for group workout mode, this is a new experience actually to me. And please, my first time trying it out. Uh, when we first jumped in to the pens, actually, it was just like joining an event where if you were going to jump into a race or a group ride or something, except on the left-hand side, you were able to see all of the scheduled, uh, let's see here, right there, over there, <laughs> on the far left-hand side of the screen there, you can see all of the scheduled intervals that we have to do together today. It does look like we have 33 that have joined us, including Charlie Eisendorf, actually, from Zwift HQ. Good to see him jumping in with us. I believe one of the features then with this is that we actually all stay together throughout the workout. So regardless of how hard each one of the riders is going, there's like some sort of a rubber band effect that keeps us all together throughout the intervals. So that'll be kind of cool that we can kind of see and have company through the, uh, through the suffering it looks like we're going to be doing out here today for this lead out simulation. I think uh, last week you were saying, there was a quote from you about, what was it again, Greg? About what makes it better doing this? <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it's a very old quote of mine. It's, uh... Misery loves company, so looks like we've got 33 others here to join us in the misery. <laughs> <laughs> 33 others. Actually, Charlie's saying as long as you are pedaling, you will stay with the group. No need to close the gaps. So don't worry about closing the gaps out there today. No need whatsoever. Now, we do have um, social media integration going on, so if you would like to interact with the broadcast out here today, we do have the uh, social media integration with Workout Wednesday. So if you would like to bring in any questions or comments, you can tweet at Z Community Live, at Z Community Live, or you can make a comment over on the Facebook post. Warm up is starting to get to me already. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a great system, isn't it? Like if someone's threshold's 450 or someone's threshold's 150, we all stay together, it doesn't matter. Your, your intervals are set at the same you know, percentage of FTP, so it's great we can all, we can all stick together. And yeah, just now, the, the rubber banding keeps everyone together. Yeah, yeah, so then rather than um, having a situation where you have to worry about whether or not the people who you are doing your intervals with will be able to hang on with you, that whole thing just goes out the window. I've actually been yelled at so many times on group rides. What are you doing? It's a group <laughs> ride. I'm like, man, I gotta get these efforts in though. Like, what are you talking about? Go do your efforts by yourself, but I don't want to be by myself. What are you talking about? And so almost kind of solves 
that issue. Um, or like in game, if I were going to go do efforts with someone who I want to be around, I would have to figure out a way to like increase my weight. I put my weight in game to like, you know, 30 pounds more or something if I needed yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or they would have to weight dope or whatever. So you could get rid of that whole thing and jump into a group workout and do it together in order to get those efforts in. So, and as a coach, Greg, I would think this is an amazing tool that you oh, can just absolutely. like put something in here and join all these people. Like if this is a group of people that you're coaching, it'd be so great as an interactive tool, hey? We, we spoke about this exactly. It's like, you know, you exactly the same thing. People have either good days, bad days, or they're just at different levels. You can set the same program. You actually want them to do the same structure, but you know, they can't ride together because if someone's up the road doing 550 watts and the other person's doing 250 watts, you never see them again for the whole ride. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fantastic idea. I don't know how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And I, you know, before we were doing it where we had to load the workout in, meet up somewhere, and then try and get it done. And I've tried doing this before, and it worked okay um, with communicating over like Discord, telling people what to do, and then making sure that it's a workout that made sure everybody came back together at any point that it needed to. Um, and But then you have to design the workout around regrouping and that's not always conducive to what you're trying to get done so um and also the need for like third-party communication is good having like a discord or voice chat is very enhancing but there is also communication that's taking place also by just being near people with the whole idea of misery loving company like exactly, the idea yeah. that you know that these others are communicating to you that I'm in this with you. We're gonna get this done together, kind of a thing. And almost That's nothing needs good. to be said. A lot of times, I joined a Discord channel. I did the 112 challenge. And about halfway through, it just got into that quiet suffering moments of like, okay, I know you're there with me because you're in this with me. You know? Yeah. That's great. Casey is a uh, shum making a quick little comment here. It's a nice, interesting comment that, well, let's go ahead and bring this in. He says, uh, this group workout needs to be added to sub two like rides. Just make zone two and zone three rides. No group ride flyers. Great comment there, Kason. Definitely see that helping a ton. Uh, people get in there. Together. People get in those rides that are supposed to be nice and relaxing and and just for uh you know a nice training workout and they end up taking off up the road you never see them again yeah uh, and then wrecking the ride quote unquote so definitely would change things up and people can go as hard as they want then yeah. <laughs> so lead out simulation we got this 10 minute warm-up Getting some blood moving through the legs. And we're gonna have uh, one minute at 120. What's this first couple efforts gonna be like and what are they all about? So we've got three actual total efforts. They look like a whole lot of different efforts, but it's actually simulating each lead out man getting slightly and slightly faster and faster until you launch the sprinter. So as you can see in the beginning when we start our effort, say for example, the first guy that has to go, Adam Hansen, was usually, he was usually our first to start the lead out. And he would have to uh, initially put some gas down so that we could actually take the front. Once you have the front, you can control. And then we just progressively got faster and faster. From about, I wanna say 2K on, you know, there wasn't too many teams in the world that could pass us. And then, obviously, when you had Andre Greipel as last man, 
putting out his 2,000 watts. <laughs> there wasn't too many people in the world that could pass him. But it took a lot of work, it took a lot of practice. And these are one of the, this is some of the stuff that we used to do. Nice, nice. Hoo ha! All right, so we definitely got some blood moving through the legs now. 120 watts, chill. For those who are wondering, Lindsay borrowed my heart rate monitor last night, so it's in her backpack. Apologies that you don't get to see how hard I'm suffering. I guarantee I'm hurting her a little already. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. Um, but, uh, so it seems that we're uh, being allowed to simulate each one of the lead out trains though. And you try and hang on with that as far as you could, I would think, so hey? You, you just pretend that you're the sprinter. So it'll gradually get faster and faster ah. and faster. So you're actually the sprinter for the day. I see. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Here we go. Quick little yeah, opener. Just a little opener. Put some strain on the legs. Righto. So in three and a half minutes, we'll start our first progressive lead out. That's a As great you can question. see. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Greg. I was just going to say, as you can see, now we've got a 30 second acceleration. That's to simulate taking the front of the bike race. And then a minute of control. Make sure no one else is coming past or has control of the front. And then each section that we step off, sorry, each, each section that we step up, step up in power is one of the riders stepping off the front. So, in actual fact, for us being the sprinter, that may be the wattage we're doing, but the wattage that the guy's actually doing that, that particular turn is, is a lot harder. So we're just basically the sprinter for three sprints today. Got it, okay, I see. So each one of those ramp ups that we're looking at there is a following of one of them. Correct. <clears throat> going in, okay. And then, when you did take the front, would it take a while to get there? I mean, that's something that's really interesting, I think, to a lot of the viewers in a world tour race. I mean, how far out are you thinking about that? Getting to the front? I mean, I think at like a pretty good amount of Ks out, you're starting to talk already. Or is you just such right. a well oiled machine that you're like, nah, 15K to go. We know where we need to start moving to and all that. It was, uh... It, was, it definitely varied at the race you were at. Like, you know, any other race would be 15, 20k to go. We'd start talking. How's everyone feeling? What direction is the wind coming from? Okay, let's stay on the left-hand side. But Tour de France, it's a whole new game. It's like, you literally were spread across the road. You had to start fighting for position 40 kilometers from the finish just to try and hold position. I tell you, the stress at the Tour it's like, you just can't even, you can't even describe it. Wow, so very different situation. And the Tour de France, it sounds like, is just the main one then, where you would have those fights from that far out, trying to find those exactly. positions. Is it also just the quality as well? Yes, like exactly. so many sprinter exactly teams that. that want to find the front? Well, you think about it, it's the Tour. Everybody takes their best team. Their best team is in their best condition. So it's, you know, that's why the tour is so fast. It's like, because everybody wants to ride the tour. So everybody's in perfect condition to try and make tour selection. And they can only take, they can only take nine riders. Okay, first lead out coming up. Here we go, so simulating seconds. We're gonna uh, just accelerate a little bit just to take the front of the bike race and then control it. And then we'll progress from there. So first 30 at 315, so a little bit over threshold. And then we have to go steady at what it looks to be like a 60 to 65% or so of threshold. So it's pedaling, but not resting. Not resting. Good. Just sort of, that's what you sort of just keep an eye on other teams coming. 
on the left-hand side, are we on the right side of the road? Have we got everyone? Because that's the other thing you have to make sure when there's one acceleration, you got to remember the train's five long, so always have to look around and make sure we've got everyone. All right, here we go. Here we go. I do see the questions coming through on the social media. We'll get to those in just a second. We will be bringing those in. Make sure we get the efforts done right here. So this is the move down the outside of the peloton now, just to make sure we get the front and we can control it. Righto, we've got the front. Have a look around now. Make sure everyone's on the wheel. Are we five long? Most important thing, we hasn't lost anyone. And from now on, we just ramp faster and faster. Oh, it's only one minute and 2.40, so it's just up, 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 up. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> All right, we'll get to this question. We got a question coming through. We'll get to it in just a minute here. Maybe think <laughs> about it, but anyone ever been the dedicated sprinter and gotten dropped by the lead out? I barged out of place by computer rider or just couldn't hang. It's also a good follow up. Maybe get to that after the ramp because we're trying to hold and not here drop the lead out right now. <laughs> okay, Marcel Zeberg, she's taking the front now. He can go fast for a very, very long time. So I'd be down on my drops, just getting as arrow as I possibly could save as much wattage as I could right now. And that's was gonna work spot? here. Was, was your spot the second or third? I was, I was the second last man in front of Andre. Okay, got it. So the smaller you can be now, the more energy you can save for your turn. Okay, here comes Jurgen Rawlins. All right, we get to be grateful. <laughs> Any minute. It's gonna hurt. So you can see the progression starts off okay and then just gets harder and harder. And I mean, yeah, yeah. hold on, hold on. At the end. Some of the some of the water we used to do during races. I didn't dare put it in this workout. I would think uh, it would be... <clears throat> so, we just pushed, I think, 150%, right, on that yeah. last one? Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
150%. So I'm thinking you're looking at 2.5 to 3.0 percent for that last 15. If it were two, if it were like full on of what you guys were doing. My last 25 seconds would be close to, yeah, exactly that. But they say if you're a good top end sprinter, you should be able to do 22 to 25 watts per kilo as your peak power. The thing, the thing I had to change, I had to change, I had to learn to do my 300 meters out of the saddle because I'm so small. Andre never used to get quite enough, um, you know, sits, enough draft behind me. And then I had to learn to do the whole sprint out of my seat. I mean, again, that took some time and you know, it worked perfectly. That's really funny. Like you got to get up and give enough. So rather than like get really, learn to get really arrow during the lead out part where you're sitting in and then learn Absolutely. to get really big and, yeah. and kill as much wind as you can when it's your turn on the front. I love it. Oh. 100% that. So there was a question coming from Paul Whittingham that we didn't get to because we had that lead out to do. But he was saying, anyone ever been dedicated sprinter and gotten dropped by your lead out? So Dario's out of play. Like he's just, it sounds like cool stories that we could talk about. If there are anyone specific that you can think of where it was like, oh man, that would have been such a great sprint, but this happened or that happened. Or were you just guys too fast? It's happened. It's happened plenty of times. Sometimes. You know, with technical finishes, the sprinter will lose the wheel. And when the crowd's so loud, you can't hear anything. So next thing you do, you've opened the sprint, it turns out you've opened the sprint for, for FDJ or Dimension Data as opposed to opening it up for Andre. So it's At that a lot point of variation. When you notice that, Greg? Do you then just, just take over? No, you just swing off straight away and make, oh, really? make, the, and make the sprint longer. Because if you keep going, you're just doing the work for another team. So the, the obvious thing is to do is, as soon as you notice, swing, I would normally stop at 200 meters to go, but if I can stop at 300, 350, and I've accidentally got Cavendish on the wheel, it makes it a really hard sprint for him to win. And hopefully Andre's not too far behind. And uh, I can still get up there for the placings. Gotcha, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. But uh, at the World Tour level, there's usually a lot of respect because, you know, you have to race them the next day or you have to race them for the, the next 21 days, you know, in a Grand Tour. So it's, it's definitely a lot of respect when it comes to lead-out trains. There's no real pushing people off wheels and things like that. Just because what goes around comes around sort of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. The youngins probably don't understand that quite as much. I could see situations where... <laughs> The new, some of the newers come in and ruffle feathers once in a while. They learn pretty quick. <laughs> I'm loving the graph at the bottom here. You can see what we were accomplishing actually in color. So the gray then is going to be recovery zone. We get we don't do any blue really though. It looks like much here in this no, workout. It's just, we just usually step straight in it when when Marcel Seberg goes. It's like, hold on, hold on to your hats. Here we go again. So Adam Hansen's about to take off. Adam's got to get us to the front of the bike race and then control from there. All right, here we go. So obviously a little bit of pressure on the legs now as we're moving down the side of the peloton trying to get to the front of the race. Little higher on the waters this time. Okay, we took the lead. Now just control it. This is where you look back. Make sure you've got all your teammates on the wheel and you stick to one side of the road. depending on what direction the wind's coming from.
love an ERG mode for this. Really good. Especially for these quickly changing efforts like this. This part coming up used to always scare me. When Seaberg would take off, this was your determining factor on how good your legs are. <laughs> and whether or not it was gonna work out. <laughs> whether it's gonna be whether it's gonna be a happy ending or not. <laughs> Okay. Key to a lead out is nice and smooth. No massive accelerations. Every time that the sprinter has to do a massive acceleration, loads up with lactic acid and it slows him down for his, his final burst of the line. Now the focus is coming in. Everything Here we gets go. Here's Jürgen Rund. We're about to go now. By this stage, we're doing 65k an hour. Nobody can move. Okay, here's my turn. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Lots of stars. We're doing it right. <clears throat> so some questions coming through. Once we catch our breath. Wow. Casey Shum with an easy one. What trainer are you on, Nathan? I am on the hammer uh, from Cyclops. And I believe Hendy is on a Wahoo kicker. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so Coach Hendy's on the kicker. I am on the Cyclops. Sorry, it's hammer. Paul Whittington coming through with What's the opinion of sprint teams about having the GC guys getting involved in a final? That is a great question, actually. No smile. Look at that smile coming from Greg. Big, huge smile coming through. Shaking the head, too. What's, what's going on, Greg? Well, the thing is, the bunch sprint, they're messy, they're wild, they're, they're dangerous. Yet, you've got a guy like, say, Cadell Evans or TJ Van Garderen or whoever it is, it's a big GC contender, Chris Froome. And you have to give them respect because, of course, you don't want to just knock him off out the way because he's going to probably go on and win the Tour de France. Whereas he can sometimes, and I'm sure they don't do it on purpose, but they sometimes get in the way of our lead out accidentally. And when you're going super fast, Anytime you're not on the wheel, 
it's costing you a lot of energy. So, you know, we've discussed it. Team buses, it's even gone, you know, ask the UCI if it could neutralize the race. If you know it's a bunch sprint, neutralize the race at 3K to go because I can guarantee you those GC guys, they don't want to be in the bunch sprint either, <laughs> but they don't want to lose time till 3K to go. So they have to stay up there, fight, 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 so that they stay on the front half of the peloton and not lose stupid 10 seconds, 12 seconds to Contador or or to Cadell or, or where it might be, you know? So yeah, it's definitely a bone of contention, that's for sure. It's just one of those things where you can imagine two weeks into a Grand Tour, 220 Ks in, and here you are having to shift Chris Froome because he's accidentally, you know, just slipped in the way there to stay out of trouble. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a good question, mate. Yeah, it's a good question, and you don't want to be the guy who's shifting him off the wheel and ruins the tour kind of for him kind of thing. at the same time it's a bike race and you're looking for that yeah i mean that that's a tough one the organizers too i would think because you have the principle of bike racing then you have the principle yeah. of like you're saying ruining the grand tour for a different competition that is not a that because you have so many competitions happening within the bike race really interesting dynamics there and that's the thing it's like this is our job the sprint part and I totally understand you don't want to lose small time gaps so let's neutralize it the only time they couldn't do that is if we're still chasing a breakaway we've left the timing a little bit wrong and we're inside 3k because quite often we've only caught a breakaway at 500 meters to go you know we've started the chase too late or you know there was some infighting between teams who was going to start chasing first so it's a, uh, yeah, it's the only time that they couldn't bring in the neutralized 3K to go rule. So it's uh, now it's a really interesting question and it's been going on for years and years. And every GC contender that I've asked about it, you know, they say, I don't want to be part of the sprint. I don't want to be here. <laughs> but if I want to win, if I want to win the tour, I have to be here. Thanks a lot for the question, Paul Winningham. Appreciate it. I do see all your comments coming through. We will get to them. Um, we are about to start the next lead out, but we do have an 8.30 ramp up there after that, and we, we do see those. Cyclops, thanks a lot. Yep, representing the hammer. Loving it for sure. Good to see you there. We're about to throw it down for 3.15, so here we go. So here's Adam again, just taking the front for the last time. Make sure we're at the front of the pelt on. Make sure we can control what side of the road we want to be on. If the wind's coming from the left. We want to be pinned hard against the right hand side. <clears throat> nice, we've got control. So Make sure real we're... quick while we're in this part. So everybody locked into watts per kilogram. Or just sticky group looks awesome. So yeah, everybody's based on their watts per kilogram for their FTP. We all stick together. We suffer it out together, get it done together, while everybody can ride at their level for these specific intervals. John Grab though. I right, go ahead. Sorry, Handy. Just want to make sure that was understood. Yep, that's great. So now we look around and we make sure that we've got the whole team on the wheel and we can start to go faster and faster because here comes Marcel Zeberg. He goes. So like I said, i would be trying to get as small as I possibly could in this part of the lead out. 
Yes. Trying to lose five, 10 watts if I could. You make me want to go to the middle of handlebars just saying that. <laughs> Now Jürgen Rollins attacks, away we go. Again, he'll bump us up, 65, 67. OG hit 68, 69, and then Gride will hit about 72, 73 <laughs> kilometers. We good. won. We oh. won, mate. We got it. First time winner of Tour de France stage. Oh my god. Not Nathan Guerra. Greg Henderson got it today. Here we go. <laughs> Oh boy. <sighs> we won Anderson in the chat, loving it. You know be good as the coach is if we get a beacon over your head. You know what I mean? Maybe you're yeah, right. on a bacon. Rather than a bacon beacon, you know the yellow beacon, we call it the bacon. Yeah. Maybe we can have like a special beacon that turns the colors that we are doing at the time. Right? So they're like following you and the colors that we're supposed to be doing. Like you're the leader and it changes colors along with the interval. So if we're supposed to be gray, it's gray. If we're supposed to be blue, green, etc. That'd be really cool, actually. Uh, Matthias Thur says, Victory Boys, really dynamic broadcasting. Thanks a lot, Matthias. Hi. Great work out, lads, Simic says. Uh, more interesting comments coming through here from Paul. I'm loving these comments. Paul, we'll get those in just a second. Mike Wickstrand saying, uh, good work, guys. But I'm not the only one that can't talk while suffering. Yep. Yeah. Even, <laughs> and we're all human, that's for sure, right? Right, Andy? Oh, mate. But like we always say, misery loves company. Uh, that's right. That's right. And yeah, the three second gap rule from Paul. And 3K neutral time, knee extending in his opinion, he says. Esteban Chavez lost out big time in this year's tour because of three second rule in some finals. Must be frustrating for GC too. You know, I would, I would wonder if there's anything, um, having worked for a GC and having worked for a sprint team, the differences in uh, opinions and talks and kind of the, uh, the air about it, you know what I mean? Like what, what the uh, frustrations were on both sides. And have you been in a situation where there were, where there were tensions within the team, even that differed on opinion there, because there's a GC and a sprinter on the team. Yeah, and that was again came down to a respect thing because we often used to ride with Jurgen Vandenbroek, who's been uh, fourth in the tour before, even fifth in the tour. So he always knew he was allowed to follow. He was allowed to follow Andre until about that three kilometer to go area. So it could actually work in their favor if they had a sprint sprint train, but a lot of them don't. Gotcha, that must be interesting. Splitting the resources too, must be a difficult task for the director. 
I would think. A hundred percent, yeah. <clears throat> and as a as a veteran rider, I mean, you've been the young rider, you've been middle career, and also the veteran. Would you have to take on a leadership role then too in that kind of stuff? That's exactly was was part of my job for the last six years was get these guys, make sure we knew what side of the road we were we were on. Because I've been around for so long, you know, you have that mutual respect in the peloton. So it was definitely get the guys together, study the road book so we knew the final was a left, right, left, roundabout. We knew what side of the exactly what side of the roundabout to go on. I mean you saw a stage this year in the tour, Edvard Bosenhagen. He had obviously studied the road book. He saw that the right hand side through the last roundabout was about 50 meters shorter. Everybody else went to the left. He went on the right, won the stage solo in Tour de France. So it definitely pays, definitely pays to read the road book. Nice, nice, nice. That's awesome though about the uh, leadership there. Very cool. Um, so then 8.30 ramp up now. So it looks like we got a little surprise here. Coach no, no, likes so to put surprises in. <laughs> no, I just don't like to stop on zero wattage. I like to, because there's a specific wattage which each individual athlete clears lactate faster than, than actually completely stopping. So I start really low and then I just ramp it up to about 50% uh, of your FTP. So it's just so that you're not producing lactate, but you actually clear it faster. So it's not really a ramp, it just, it's just we don't do zero watts, you know, so you're still not loaded with lactate when you get off the bike. Oh, another question came through a while ago from Allison Duck, long time viewer actually. Um, says, uh, oh, I have a winter training question for, question for coaches Hendy and Nathan. When doing barbell squats, my weight lifter friend tells me to open my feet more to allow myself to squat all the way down and be able to push up. But for cycling, should I keep the feet more parallel to each other? So I'll take a shot at it quick and then I'm going to go to Hendy. So, because I might be totally wrong, but all the reading and on the literature that I've looked at has said you're in the gym for cycling, it should be cycling specific motions. Um, and you want to use as little time, like you want to use your time as efficiently as possible there and then move back to the bike. And, um, you know, if you have a weakness, then focus the weakness, obviously. But what would you say, Hendy? I would say keep them parallel. So we're always taught the same thing. It's weight training is a supplement to your, to your cycling training. So you go as deep as what a pedal stroke with, is, is, and it's 90 degrees. Whereas I do know, I had a friend from BMX and a lot of their squats are those really deep squats because if you watch a BMX rider, he's right over the back of his saddle. He's literally, his backside's touching the, his back wheel and he is doing a deep squat. So it's, it's all about what is relevant to the sport or to the exercise or to the discipline and what you're doing. So for all the years that I've been doing gym, and the people that I've been coaching, keep it cycling specific. And even, you know, it's uh, the other good, the other really good exercise is just a single lead leg press. It's super safe, it's super efficient, and it, it, it eliminates a lot of your muscle imbalances. And they're the, they're yeah. the two go-tos. That's one of my go-tos too. I love the, the single leg press for sure. And uh, line it up, I line them up just like I would on the bike. Move yep. one away, and then chit, 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 get them in, get them done, and uh, go to the next one. So, thanks for the yeah, no problem, Allison. Thank you so much for the question. Again, uh, Coach Tandy, we can find these on your website. All these workouts that are part of these new group workout modes that we're using today. So, for those of you who are just joining in, this is the new group workout feature. They are testing them out right now. They're still in beta, but. Um, you can jump on your Zwift mobile link or on the app and you can find them. Just select the, the, to join the, it'll say right in it, Zwift group workout. Go ahead and join it up and you can, you can enter into one of these. Today is a special one that is designed specifically by Coach Andy and you can find all of these workouts that we are doing here over at his website, coachhendy.com. You wanna walk me through this just a little bit here, Greg, what we're looking yep. at? 
So we've got the, uh, if you want to shop the programs there, you've got your sprint program, you've got your TT training, or your climbing training. So your climbing, for example, will be a lot of um, FTP-based stuff. Your sprint training is a lot of power stuff, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, explosive power. And then your climbing is like a lot of climbing techniques that are used by the top climbers. For example, one of my sessions we did on here a couple of weeks ago called the Sir Wigo. So you download those, you'll get the ZWO file that comes with it. You'll get a 20 page PDF download that explains every single workout, you know, to the T. And you can either follow it on the road or if you don't have the time, if you stretch for time, plug it into your Zwift and it becomes like an hour, hour and a half workout. And it's exactly similar sort of thing that we did today. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Yep. It looks like we did a 44, 52 total for me because I think I stopped pedaling a couple times um, messing with my fan. Average 192. It looks like I got a 58 TSS out of 44 minutes. I mean, that's pretty good TSS out of 44 minutes, actually. That's a uh, good intensity solid. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we can look at your critical powers here. You can also see generally where you went. You can also, the cool thing is you can see who you rode with. So if you were like, hey, I met a buddy I was able to do this with. A lot of people I know, actually, I jumped in here. Szynski, one of the racers, too, jumped in with us, it looks like, that I see a lot of times. But all the people you rode with, you can see that. You can follow them. And friend them, Chris and Min, good to see you there. Chris was in here with us. Lots of longtime viewers jumped in, actually. Good to see them. Quentin LeFay was in here from Vision. Thanks, guys, for tuning in and jumping in with us. We got 25 out of 25 stars, Greg. We did it yeah, right. We did well, mate. Hey, well done. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, uh, what's going on two weeks from now, Greg? You think we're, let me see, am I, where am I? Uh oh. I might be, yeah. I might be gone. Oh no, I think I'm traveling in two weeks. Maybe we'll, so everybody, we're going to have to get back to you on the next one. We'll <laughs> it might be next you. week. It might be the week after. We'll have to see. I think I'm traveling two weeks from now, but we'll see uh, if maybe we can sneak it in. I think we can sneak it in prior to jumping on a plane, but maybe we'll do it from uh, ZHQ. That would be kind of cool, actually. But, uh, any last words or anything about this uh, workout? So we did lead out simulation. That was lead out simulation, so the progressive power increase to uh, to deliver your sprinter. And today you were the sprinter, and we won three from three. So, congratulations, everyone! <laughs> Good job, everybody! Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. That was uh, with Coach Andy Greg Henderson. Thanks a lot for your time, Greg. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, mate. It's good fun. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So. Everybody, the, if you want to check out those workouts, head on over to CoachHendy.com and uh, keep a lookout for the next group workout with Greg Henderson. Uh, we'll make sure to be posting on all the ZCL places, and you'll also be able to find the events in the mobile app now. Group workouts are in beta right now, being tested. You can check them out. Go ahead and ride them, and then uh, watch out for when the next Coach Hendy ride is. And uh, we will see you tomorrow for Racer Focus on Zwift Community Live with Ian Anderson tomorrow morning in the KISS AM race. And then I will be covering the KISS Europe race later in the day. All right, cheers, everybody. And as always, rattle.